So Nebula, uh, the streaming service, uh, has partnered with Spotify to bring a curated selection of content to Spotify's users. Um, I, I have a quote here from Spotify's head of content partnerships, Jordan Newman, uh, saying, quote, creators are at the core of everything we do at Spotify, so we are eager to partner with Nebula, a creator-built and creator-operated platform to bring this content to our users across the globe. Video greatly deepens our creators' engagement, growth, and retention with their fans, so we are thrilled to introduce such an innovative and diverse slate of video content to our audiences, end quote. So you might be saying, I've never heard of Nebula. You know, like, I know Hulu, I know Netflix, I know all these things. What the hell is Nebula? So Nebula launched in 2019, and it is a really a one-of-a-kind kind of, kind of service. It is a creator-first streaming platform created by uh, the standard broadcast content management agency. Um, and the idea was, you know, if you watch a lot of YouTubers, especially if they do like video essay content, more scripted content, you might see at the end of their videos and they'll be like, oh, by the way, I had this whole other section that I couldn't include in this, in this version, in this, in the final cut of the video. But you can find that deleted scene in, on Nebula. Like, it's like a place where YouTubers, um, can, Essentially, they, they, they would partner with Nebula. You can't just self-upload the way you could just self-upload to YouTube. But you would partner with Nebula um, and be able to offer, you know, subscribers exclusive content. Whether it be extended versions of videos that are on, on your YouTube page. Um, videos that aren't even going to go on your YouTube page. Or maybe they start on Nebula and then like a month later they end up on YouTube. Um, so it's a really interesting model that... That's, that features many, many high profile YouTubers, again, very much in like the video essay world. Like the people I know, like Patrick Willems, I think was a really early one. Lindsay Ellis, uh, pictured here is Mark Brown from uh, Game Maker's Toolkit. Um, so it's a really, really interesting platform. Um, and again, it complements the YouTuber, the, those creators, their free content, right? They don't completely go cold turkey. They still have that revenue stream and also have that audience that can't afford to pay for Nebula. They don't want to pay for Nebula. Um, and, you know, I think I read a stat that, you know, all of the people on Nebula collectively have about 120 million YouTube subscribers. Now, how many of those are just the same people? You know, that's, a, that, that's we'll never quite have those numbers. But in any case, these are, these are high profile creators, right? Uh, Nebula itself has about 650,000 subscribers on its platform. And I was talking about like people not, maybe not being able to afford it. But it is fairly cheap, all things considered. It's only five dollars a month or fifty dollars a year if you if you do it annually. Um, and Nebula has been trying to grow, right? It's 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 found a very successful niche for itself, but it has been trying to grow. A uh, variety notes that they recently I can't remember when this was. I almost did this a story on this, but it's ended up not too many other bigger things happened, so I couldn't talk about it. But Variety notes that they, you know, they recently created uh, their own film studio, like production company called Nebula Motion Pictures, um, and they're also creating like a news division, right? So they're trying to expand into different kind of content, and perhaps video essay content can be like the anchor or the core. But it's it, they really seem to want to diversify the um, the offerings that you would get with Nebula. Um, and the the uh, on Spotify, you're not going to have every single Nebula creator and all the content on Spotify, at least not right away. Again, it's going to be more curated. Um, I think I think I read it was like maybe a dozen of, of their creators are going to be available uh, through Spotify, through like their Spotify for podcasters hub website. Um, and some of the people that it includes uh, would be uh, YouTube creators like Captain Midnight and Hello Future Me and and like I mentioned before, Game Makers Toolkit. Um, but notably not Patrick Willems or Lindsay Ellis, who are like, I feel like the, the big ones. So maybe they're like waiting to see how this goes. Um, so, so what does Spotify get out of this, right? Obviously this is a huge level up for, for, Neb for Nebula, but what does Spotify get out of this? So, uh, this is an opportunity for Spotify to have a bigger stake in video. Anyone who has like a passing understanding of the internet and, and media knows that video content is the most exciting and most, despite it basically being the same as it was 20 years ago when YouTube really took off, um, video is really, you know, on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and then, and then YouTube as well. 
video content is really, really important for driving growth, right? And, and building engagement with fans and, and creators. So, um, and speaking of creators, Deadline notes that Spotify is really trying to focus on the creator economy. This idea of, you know, they, they Spotify has had some big deals with a lot of top talent, um, but except for people like Joe Rogan, um, that strategy has yielded mixed results. So that's one of the great things about YouTube is essentially they build the infrastructure um, and let the users create their product essentially right like you know youtube is not just the infrastructure it is the content but youtube has nothing to do with the content so i think spotify is understanding that that like like tiktok like youtube that's where the money is obviously this is more it's not quite like those in the sense that again you can you it's the it's not user uploaded on nebula um but in any case they're trying to tap into smaller more boutique content creators right but like I said, this is a huge level up for, for Nebula. Um, I've always been interested in it, um, both from like a business perspective, but also like th that sounds incredible um, because like I, I watch a lot of those people's content. Um, I could just never justify the cost. Um, and not because it's expensive because it's fairly cheap, but I can get most of the content for free on YouTube. Um, and also I have like very sporadic viewing habits, which isn't helpful when you're going to pay a subscription fee. It doesn't, it's going to be the same price whether you watch a hundred hours of it or two hours, right? So I've just never been able to kind of been in a place where I, I can mentally justify that cost. Um, but again, it also speaks to, again, the popularity of video essays. You know, I did a, a story, I think it was a, uh, a week or two ago about uh, Jenny Nicholson's video about the Star Wars Hotel at Disney World in Florida. And, you know, people think like, oh, video, like people always complain like, oh, kids, they, they have such a short attention span. No, they, they, we, we just don't want the same slop that people have had to accept for decades. You know, I will watch this four hour Star Wars hotel YouTube video slash video essay kind of, um, you know, if it's good and it's interesting. So I think, you know, there is that meme that I love and I, this is definitely me, the meme of like, sorry, babe, you can't hang out tonight. A YouTuber just uploaded a four hour video essay on a topic I've never heard of before, right? Like that's a, that's a meme for a reason. Like people get into this shit. Um, so I think video essay content, you know, it's always been popular, but it's, it's popularity and, and less so popularity, more so mainstream awareness is growing exponentially. Right. And I think, you know, it's always been relegated to YouTube and like comparable platforms. Um, but could the format of video essay become a list premiere content the way we think of shows and movies, right? Um, and maybe this, maybe this deal, if this is successful, this could open the door, uh, for different streaming services, hosting video essay content, right? Like, like, uh, like a Netflix partnering with some of these people, like a Patrick Willems or a Lindsay Ellis or a Game Maker's Toolkit, um, just to kind of diversify if, again, if the interest is there, that could really changed the game. Um, and as someone who both likes watching video essays and someone who has made up video essays, which you should go check out, it's in the description, Peter Squared, where I talk about uh, the Disney movie Frozen. Um, you know, I think it, it's, it can only help the medium and the format. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if this takes off or if this ends up being another thing that Spotify does that just kind of, kind of just, just kind of flops.